All right, now we'll do a quick introduction to the fungi, uh, one of the other kingdoms that used to be lumped in with plants, but they're not plants. They're actually more closely related to you than to plants. Now, fungi have an interesting uh, body plan. So first of all, they have their, their bodies are made up of these long threads of cells, these long slender cells that link together end to end. Um, and these long threads are called hyphae, H-Y-P-H-A-E, hyphae. Hyphae, uh, I'm writing with a mouse, so forgive me, but hyphae spread all over the place. Like if you see a mushroom on, on the ground, the mushroom is just the part that has sex. The hyphae are in the ground or in that rotten log, and they're everywhere. Notice tons of surface area to volume here, which is really important because Fungi uh, eat by secreting enzymes out of their hyphae, digesting plant material, typically, or animal material. Break, what I mean by that is they break it down into macromolecules, and then they absorb it. So it would be like you laying on a sandwich, secreting acid out of your body, breaking down the sandwich, then absorbing it. So that's what the hyphae are. And then the whole body of the fungus, uh, all the hyphae together, is known as a mycelium. Uh, you can look in your book for a better <laughs> better uh, spelled or better written out. Oh, boy, that's terrible. Mycelium. Mycelium is the body of the fungus. And that includes all the hyphae, basically, combined. All the hyphae is the body of the fungus, the mycelium. <clears throat> so how are fungi like plants? How are fungi like animals is a question I have here. You might pause this and ask yourself if you could answer it. But they are like plants in that they don't run away from things. Uh, they can't move. So they make lots of chemical defenses to defend themselves. That's why magic mushrooms exist, right? Because mushrooms can't run away. How are fungi like plants? <clears throat> well, or how are they like animals? Well, they're like animals in that they are heterotrophs. They are not autotrophs. They eat food. Uh, they're also like plants in that they have a cell wall. But their cell wall is made of chitin, uh, not made of cellulose. So that cell wall is made of chitin, which is a material found in some animals like arthropods. So the material is animal-like, but the cell wall uh, is more like you'd see in a plant, except it's made out of chitin. So um, <clears throat> they make hydrolytic enzymes, so they digest food outside of themselves. And what would be the best body plan then to grow through food and digest it? Well, a body plan that has tons of surface area to volume. And that is that hyphal structure we saw before, those hyphae. Um, another example of fungi that you see every day, just go outside and look at a brick wall or at a tree, that's lichens. And lichens are mutualists. Mutualist means a symbiotic relationship in which both partners benefit. And a lichen typically consists of a fungus, as you see here with its hyphae, and those, those hyphae trap water, uh, and, and often a green algae or cyanobacteria, which is a photosynthetic organism. And they live together in this community. The uh, hyphae provide habitat for the algae, and the algae provide sugars for the fungus, and that's what a lichen is. Fungi have another very important uh, ecological role, and that is as mycorrhizal fungi. So increasing the surface area of roots in virtually every plant species we look at. Even ancient fossil plants had these hyphae, long slender hairs, uh, attached to roots, uh, and then those extend out into the soil, increasing absorbance of nutrients and water. Here's an example of grass grown with, with mycorrhizae and in soil without mycorrhizae. Look how much shorter the grass grown without mycorrhizae is. These fungi are, are very important for uh, the health of land plants, making colonization of land possible in the Paleozoic. Fungi also can cause diseases. Uh, you may have seen something like this in goldfish that you had at home. Um, they kill... Uh, amphibians as well. Um, they also uh, can invade crops. So here we see corn smut, which is a growth on corn. Uh, we see uh, fungus on leaves. 
We even see uh, ergot on rye. See those little things on those rye plants? You use rye to make bread, but ergot is basically a fungus that produces something very close to LSD. And in fact, people eating bread made from uh, rye that had ergot back in the Middle Ages may have led to some of the witch trials because of the odd behavior of people tripping out on this fungus. So once again, fungus makes a lot of chemicals to defend itself because it can't run away. These chemicals are known as secondary compounds or secondary metabolites. I'm just gonna write compounds with the mouse here. How about COMP? <laughs> secondary compounds. Um, these are compounds made by a plant or, or animal or, or fungus that are not primary compounds. Primary compounds or primary metabolites are things like ATP. Things that you have to have to survive. Secondary compounds are extra chemicals made to uh, attract a mate or to defend oneself. And plants and fungi produce a lot of secondary compounds because they can't run away. So that's why we, we grind a lot of plants and fungi up to make medicine out of them because they are full of these compounds, these chemicals that most other organisms don't have. Uh, fungus also causes diseases in native bats here in Arkansas. White nose mold gets on the noses of bats, irritates them, prevents them from hibernating, and bats are dying by the thousands. This is typically spread by people exploring caves with dirty boots spreading the mold from one cave to another. Ringworm is not really a worm. It's a human infection uh, uh, caused by a fungus. Uh, it gets into livestock and dogs and things as well. It's a fungus living uh, on or under the skin. Uh, its hyphae are extending out, causing this this appearance. It's a parasite. Athletes, for it's another example of a fungus that we are often uh, attacked by. But fungi aren't just bad. Uh, we use fungi all the time. <coughs> Yeast is a single-celled fungus that we use to... Uh, Bread and bread making, it causes bread to rise. It releases carbon dioxide gas, which gets trapped in the glutinous dough of bread, causing it to form air bubbles, which causes the bread to rise. Uh, yeast is used in beer making and wine making. Um, fungus is used in making soy sauce and, and lots of other uh, uh, products in, in, uh, in the food industry come from fungi. Also, fungi breaks down bread, oddly enough. Bread mold is a type of fungus. Another use of fungus, uh, this is an example of the reproductive structures of penicillin seen under a scanning electron microscope. We make a lot of medicines from these organisms. This is the <coughs> agcaric mushroom, which causes hallucinations. Uh, it's kind of also known as a magic mushroom. Uh, it grows in uh, places like Siberia. And in fact, some folks up in Siberia figured out if you drink reindeer pee after they eat these mushrooms, you can hallucinate without getting sick. Whereas if you eat the mushrooms, you hallucinate and get sick. I've always wondered how they figured that out. But this is an example of a mushroom that makes, makes those secondary metabolites, those chemicals that help it to protect itself, but also then, uh, in this case, other organisms have found a use for it. The same thing with the properties of penicillin. The secondary metabolites are used as a drug by us. So here's penicillin. Uh, and we have a bacteria growing here, and penicillin is preventing that bacterium <coughs> from spreading. Of course, we eat mushrooms straight up too, like truffles or mushrooms. Um, the mushrooms we eat are actually a reproductive structure. 